And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away. And I sin purge. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Then said our Lord, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitation, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly destroyed. And the Lord have removed men far away. And there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth. And it shall return. And shall be eaten as a teal tree. As an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. We praise and thank the Lord for reading his holy word. On this morning, we are looking at Isaiah. And we're looking at the elements necessary to serve God. And they are a vision of the Lord, a conviction of unworthiness, a surrender to the Lord, to his call and his commission. As we look into this text Isaiah begins speaking and he says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. You see, King Uzziah was a king that had a righteous rule. It was a rule that was glorious in the sight of those of Judah. Uh, there was little unemployment. There the wealth and the prosperity of this people was, uh, was seen abundantly during the, the rule of Uzziah. And now we find that Isaiah is getting his uh, commission, he's getting his call, and it's at a pivotal time in Judah because it's a time where Uzziah is either dead or he is dying. And uh, with the death of King Uzziah, his son comes on the scene, Jothan, and Jothan has a righteous reign as well, but there's an Ahaz that comes, and Ahaz corrupts the people, and here we find that Isaiah is getting his commission, Isaiah rather is getting his commission at a time in which, praise God, Israel, uh, Judah is going from prosperity, is going from uh, a life of luxury and praise and worship, just experiencing God, and to a time of trial and tribulation, to a time of sin and degradation. And, and so the Lord speaks to Isaiah, praise God, in that year. And it says that, and we find that there are three things 
that one needs to really answer the call. You need a vision of the Lord. In other words, you can't really serve God unless you know who he is. And, and so God, praise God, he shows, he shows up in a vision to you, Isaiah. And he prays that he's in the temple and he's glorious and he's mighty and he's strong. And as Isaiah looks upon the Lord and, and he sees how great and wonderful he's able to compare and contrast a great kingship that, that Uzziah had. But God lets him know that there's a king that's higher than Uzziah. There's a king that sits up high and looks down low and it's God himself. And, and so Isaiah, praise God, sees what a real king is, what a heavenly king is. He sees, praise God, the kingdom that is to come in the near future. And when he looks at this, there's a, a sense of humility that comes upon him. And he begins to say that I'm undone and I, I dwell upon the unclean people. Woe is me. And, and we find that the seraph, praise God, touches him with a coal that he takes off of the altar. You see, if we're going to serve the Lord, we have to have some humility. And we have to know who he is, praise God. And we have to come into a place, praise God, where we answer the call and say, yes, Lord. Yes to your will and yes to your way. And, and so Isaiah, he has all of these elements, praise God, that are working his life at this time. And, and God has to encourage him, you see, because it's a difficult situation that Isaiah comes up in. He, he, he's leaving, praise God, the... The, the climax of Judah and they're going down and they're descending vastly and, and it's a hard ministry it's a hard time to minister it's a hard time to serve but God encourages him and there's a time that we're in today praise God that we see that everywhere it seems that we look there's destruction there's pain there's suffering there's, there's people praise God they've been abused and people that are abusing praise God and, and sin seems to be on the rampage but there's one thing for sure sure that they that trust in the Lord they're going to be alright. If you trust in the Lord everything's going to work out and, and, and we find out that we're going to understand it better by and by. And so Isaiah surrenders to the Lord and to his call. You see there are many called but there are few chosen. And what we find is that the call goes out to the vast majority, but there are few people that are, praise God, take the time to learn and to see who God is. There are few people that are actually humble themselves before God and, and actually answer the call. And so many are called, but few are chosen. Few are the individuals that will actually, praise God, surrender to the call. In the time that we're living in, that the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. The harvest is truly plenteous. And it's our prayer that more laborers will come in. Men and women that this great gospel can be committed unto. Men that will surrender themselves and yield unto the call of God. Praise God, that will praise God, pray and fast and study the scriptures daily to show themselves approved unto God. There is a cause and there is a need. Even in this hour in 2019, praise God, the fifth Sunday after the epiphany of Christ, praise God, there's a need of salvation. There's a need that one will harrow the great word of God. And we thank God that we had men of old as Isaiah that, that blazed and set a stage, praise God. They were pioneers unto us even unto the day that even in difficult times, if you trust in Jesus, things will work out fine. And even in difficult times, praise God, if you trust in him, praise God, he'll make a way out of nowhere. As the song said, that he may not come when you want him. Hallelujah, but he's all Always on time. Jesus is on time. Hallelujah. And certainly we thank the Lord for this opportunity to speak into your hearts and minds at the ecumenical church. Praise God. So the three elements was a vision of the Lord. To truly serve him, you must know who God is. A conviction of unworthiness. Isaiah, he confessed that he was unworthy. You see, we are unworthy when we stand before God. We're unholy and we're unrighteous. And all of our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags when we see his righteousness. So when we truly know who God is, when we truly experience him, praise God, there's an overwhelming unworthiness that comes upon us. And we're able to confess, Lord, that I've sinned and I've fallen short. And, and without you, I'm nothing, Lord. But with you, all things become possible. 
For all things are possible to them that believe. And in the surrender to the Lord, to his call, and his co to his commission. The commission of God is the greatest commission that a man or woman can have. It's far above a, a president or a king or a judge or a lawyer or a doctor or a scientist. All of these are notable professions. But when you're called of God to come into the ministry, to serve and to worship, to proclaim the very kingdom of God, there's, there's nothing quite like it. Hallelujah. For the Bible speaks about the men and women of God and said the world is not worthy of us. For we are peculiar people. Holy, praise God. A royal priesthood. And there's none like us nowhere. Let us pray. Mm -hmm.